two, we are streaming. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, we are streaming. One, two, one, two, we are streaming. Don't get DMC'd. We are streaming. Can't get copyrighted for singing this song. Across the water. Uh, can you hear me? Across the water. Yes, you can hear me. Uh, can you hear me? Across the water. Yes, you can hear me. And then can you hear the game? And then can you hear the game? It's not making any noise, though. I think you can. Yeah, because if I can hear that's that I think seagull can. overlap, I think it means it's coming through the computer, which means yeah, you can hear, hear that's that. Okay, I will say, brief introduction here, brief introduction. I will say that uh, I'm trying to fix the sync issues with the sound. Every time I look, because I've got my little monitor window, I've got Twitch open in another little window. Just I've only got one monitor. So it's piled on all these different windows, and one of them is Twitch open down there. So I can see that we're streaming. I can see that uh, I'm talking and all that. I can't listen to it live because otherwise the computer hears it and then it replays it back to you like this. Why is the computer hears it and then it replays it back to you like this. Why is the computer hears it and then it replays it back to you like this. Why is the computer hears it and then it replays it back to you like this. Why I can see that we're working, and when I look at that, and when I put the sound on, it does seem to be in sync. It seems to be okay. But every time I get it out of there, every time I download the video and put it into Final Cut, or watch the video on Twitch, which I don't often, I usually edit them and then put them on YouTube and then watch them, but uh, it seems to be out of sync. <laughs> and I don't know why, why it looks good to me on broadcast, on monitor, but why it's always out of sync in the edit. And I always fix it, I always move it a little bit, the sound, before I put it on the edit and upload it to YouTube. And uh, that's fine, that's normal when we're talking. I can just move it a bit, the sound at the bottom, just shift that along so it's fixed. I make a little note of how many milliseconds I've moved it and I change the sound setting, the delay on the microphone by those milliseconds and it never seems to make the right difference. Um, and then we've got this added problem now, is if I'm moving that sound file, that sound thing, if I'm moving that along to get it in sync, that's fine for my voice. But what if the game's not in sync or is in sync? Then I'm pushing the game out of sync. So it's like double trouble in my brain now. So we're going to do today's episode of Firewatch with those problems <laughs> potentially inbuilt. But that's fine. That's fine. Uh, it's just like a slight sinking issue with the sound that we're going to, you know, we're going to work that out over time, aren't we? We're going to eradicate that over time. So that's fine. Uh, what is good is that I'm better at popping out the chat. <laughs> oh no, let's put that window on. Wee, there you go. See, look, boom. Got that straight off. Didn't mess that up. I'm better at having the camera and the. You know, I'm better at doing the general streaming, having everything set up and it, the kilobytes and all that seems to be working better. My image is a bit sharper. I've got a slightly better lens on the camera than the one we started with. So there's positives. So it's not all bad. <laughs> there's more positives today. England are in the biggest football match of my generation, you know, my life. And I'm quite excited about it. Going to be watching it later. So. I was going to do a like, big long firewatch stream, but I think because of the England thing, because of the other things that are happening around it, because of the disruption in my life, uh, family, friends wanting to watch it and things, I, I'm probably not going to finish firewatch today. Fine, that's fine as well. We'll finish it later. And there's another good thing to say about that, which is I've started writing a little script about it. I should press A to start. We'll continue our game and we'll just like... And I will stay here on this lovely screen for a minute, won't we? This is a nice screen while I do some talking. Let's move my face so you can see the far watch. Looking lovely. Look there, that looks lovely, doesn't it? Uh, <laughs> so yeah, we've got Firewatch. We've got the Twitch chat. And I need to move the, the chat now because I'm going to be looking at another window, which is what I was going to tell you about. I've started writing a little script. And I like, it's just my brain, isn't it? So this is a little bit of a preview of some of these script ideas that I've been writing because we're going to do an art review at the end. A sort of, I promised one of those for the Journey of the Circle, but I think the journey and the interview with the developer served as an art review. But this, uh, I've got some ideas writing down, some quite long scripty ideas here. So uh, I'll introduce today's episode with a little review of what we did yesterday, 
part of the script, but also some of the ideas that I've got going on in the script. So here we go. And this isn't my first, this isn't going to be my final reading of the script. This is just like, you know, so I'm not bothered if I read the script well or not. This isn't for my edit. This is just to let you in on the secret of what's going on behind the scenes. Firewatch. On the surface, at the start, this game presents the concept of early onset dementia. The story of our meeting, falling in love, and then eventual separation from a partner. I haven't written that bit in the script. Then. <laughs> I'll write that. Eventual separation from a partner. Tragic separation, we'll put. Eventual tragic. Tragic. I won't keep writing scripts, I'll, I'll just read them. Uh, it's told to us in a series of text cards. Since we don't see, I've forgotten the name of our partner. <laughs> I put Polly in the script. I don't think it was Polly. Since we don't see Polly, we don't really get any great insight into the process of dementia. This is built in as backstory for the journey we're about to embark on. I worry. Uh, there. I wonder if this isn't really about a man coping with his wife's dementia. Is this dementia specific or maybe something bigger and, you know, anag analogous, 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 is it an analogy for something bigger? You know, is it, could it, could it be? Uh, the fact we're about to go into open country, like Firewatch sets you up, look, you can see it here, open country, up the mountain, on the, in your little tower, open country. The fact we're about to go into the open country hints at this idea of freedom, release, and a great unexplored frontier. Pure America. Uh, uh, uh. Our role as beer-drinking, simple-thinking male American hints at an interesting subtext. Uh, 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 uh. Scotty Hottie. Yeah, look, Scotty Hottie. Yeah, yeah, there's old brain. Some things do go on in the old brain, don't they? Uh, hey, hey. Uh, the subtext being masculinity, masculinity, yep, masculinity, <laughs> masculine identity, and the confusion and inability to understand women from a male perspective in an ever changing world. Oh, is that what this is about? I thought it was just up a mountain chuffing around with some Firewatch stuff, and I thought the interesting backstory about my wife's dementia was just, uh, you know, a sad setting talk about mental health you know that sort of thing but maybe this is you know it's a piece of art isn't it so uh, we will eventually because other people have had i haven't looked into this i haven't dug into these ideas this is all unseen for me first playthrough first ideas dumped from my brain and then i'm going to go and do some research and look at what other people think about it to reference my ideas with theirs i'm going to try and find some uh, interviews with the developers and if i can't find enough information i'm going to contact them to ask if I can interview them uh, to discuss these ideas and maybe this is not right at all uh, sometimes artists go into a project with some really interesting subtext ideas they want to talk about and they put them in there deliberately you know uh, like I said about analogous analogy like making analogies for things or metaphors or whatever you know they, they use these ideas in their work don't they and that's how you know art is but uh, sometimes they don't know they're doing it maybe sometimes it's coming through subconsciously from them or sometimes a piece of work is made in a time with a feeling uh, sometimes the word zeitgeist is used you know you can see an 80s film can't you You know what an 80s film is like they talk about money and success and like, you know these 80s vibe things and it might not have been that the 80s filmmaker said today we're going to make a film about money and success it might just have been the culture around them was you know fueling these sort of ideas and images and things and, and, and the general culture created that idea built into the film and so it sits of a certain time and place and speaks of a certain time and place and ideas uh, so you can either deliberately build these ideas in as the artist or you can subconsciously subconsciously you know be a transmitter for the ideas as the artist within a culture or maybe you know you don't even want these ideas in your thing at all and they're nothing to do with your piece and when someone like me suggests that these subtexts are present you might say oh no that's just absolute rot absolute hogwash in fact we were going for something completely different you've got it wrong and you know that that's the case too so art is, is like that as our uh, sits over time as we have less ability to directly contact interview discuss analyze with the artist as the art ends up sitting on its own and we end up with just cultural context uh, history from you know the things we can glean the things that we're left with uh, to put together meaning 
we allow ourselves as community, as culture, to put our own ideas on the art more and more, uh, to extrapolate things from the art that may not have been deliberately worked in or culturally infused. That we may, you know, maybe the art speaks differently in a different time and place, in a different culture to a different people. So these things happen with art. So I'm not going to say my ideas are the ideas. I'm not going to say what I'm saying is the thing. But it's interesting and it's possibly different. Possibly. I mean, it might not because, like I said, I haven't done the research yet. So I don't, like when you, in my opinion, when I'm writing a thing like this, I put all my ideas out into the thing and then I do some research and see if they correlate. And if someone else has already said it, then I'm going to say, oh, someone else said this. So I was right. <laughs> not like they said it and I nicked it. But you know what I mean? So at the moment, I don't know who said what, and I'm just saying my bits. And they're not even my bits yet. They're not even fully formed. They're just ideas that I've started working on. So, yeah, um, let's carry on with that. In Fallout, what? Fallout? We're not playing Fallout. We're playing Firewatch. But in Fallout, the concept of the synth came up. The idea of this synthetic human, like an artificial intelligent, like Terminator-style robot human. There was these characters in Fallout 4 and when my sister played that game when she encountered these characters these synthetic humans she said to me am I a synth <laughs> and I thought it was really funny because I didn't have that thought when I was playing I was always you know I'm the protagonist I'm the main one I'm me and you know my ideas about my character in the game I didn't think questions question my own uh, existence an existential question am I a synth am I a synth but uh, that was what my sister questioned. I thought it was a really good, interesting question. And you don't even get the answer to that in Fortnite. They don't directly ask it. So, of course, you, you know, you to assume that you're normal. But you could be a synth, couldn't you? <laughs> so this was another question I had here. Is, is my general confusion in Firewatch, my character, my ability to um, do my job, my radio contact with a, an, a, a, like an exterior voice, is this a representation of dementia? Is it me that's got the dementia? Is my wife in the story losing contact with me because I'm losing contact with reality? Is that possible? I think not. I think not overall. I settled on no, but it's an interesting concept to raise. The fact that all the stories set in the 70s, 80s and 90s, the backstory, the textual, I can't remember exactly which dates they were, but it was definitely set in the 80s and 90s. Uh, it gives us an age for our character and historical context. It sets tone for where we are today, like where we live, you know, where we are playing the game are today. You know, it sets a tone geographically, but more important, socially. It says, you're wherever you are, you know, I ask you this question, but wherever Henry, our character is, is, you know, that was the 80s, that was the 90s. It was like this. Is it the same now? See, it sets that tone that, you know, it opens that conversation. My character is voiced by, and I can't remember, I didn't look at the stats yet, um, and he does a great job inhabiting the spirit of a frustrated, grumpy, that's their word, uh, American Henry. So I've put some notes here about the American Henry, male, stereotypical, in a way, normal man. Women are confusing to him. His wife has lost her mind. His boss is now a god, voice, matriarch. He still feels a role to protect, to put out fires, but uh, this time he's doing it for the mother country for the good of the mother country. The naked girls on day one and his shadow, I've just written there as a statement. We, we come to that later in my script. <laughs> old tools, the ways are broken. Yeah, we're doing things with old tools. We're in this Firewatch cabin. It's made of wood. We've got a gas burner. We've got a log fire. We've got a compass, uh, a radio. Radio is still modern technology, but you know we're playing this on a computer that can give us satellite images on my phone. You know, So this is old tools for the generation that's playing it, isn't it? And the youth that we encounter are rude. <laughs> Like climbing in an open world. Uh, income is, okay, well, what I've written here. Yeah, I was getting into it. We're getting into a bit too. You know, I don't need to read all of my script, I. But um, I will read. Should I read it? What do you? If you tell me in chat whether you want me to get on and play the game or carry on reading my scripts, then you can tell me. And also, if you can tell me if I'm in sync or not, that'd be nice. So. Our normal life. Yeah, I think I've given you some ideas anyway. I don't have to go through every item on my script here. Uh, I do want to bring up something else though, which is the horror aspect. 
the Naked Teens. The trail of discarded underwear and faint music in the distance is representative of the joys of hedonistic capitalism, the vigour of youth. It does feel sinister though. In modern media, horror films set up this kind of teenage titillation only to shatter it with brutality and murder. And that's literally saying this is the comfort you're used to, the uh, seedy edge of the border of where uh, things get a little bit edgy, a little bit seedy, a little bit dirty, a little bit grimy, you know, a little bit... Um, real and on that CD edge in that place that danger space where those uh, young adolescents explore and swim you know a bit like in Jaws you know the young adolescents swim you know don't they and then the, the underwater dangers the, the, the dangers they don't see uh, the, 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 they are, that they are naive to that are out there in the world these you know sinister things um, that's where modern horror treads uh, Films like Scream, I'm saying that, that's modern, it's not modern, is it, films like Scream, but you know what I'm saying, from through, from the 70s and 80s all the way through to today, uh, horror movies use that um, youthful exuberance, naivety, edge to then insert the horror and, and shatter that, uh, shatter your perfect hedonistic world, and it's, it's sort of to say that... Um, how should I put this? I might be wrong in saying this, but in horror, it's sort of to say that, you know, your perfect world, your lovely hedonism is not at all that good and it leads to bad things, maybe. Um, but anyway, in this situation, we have... Uh, in this situation, we tread the footsteps of the murderer, creeping up on naive girls in the tone of a story that could end in, uh, you know, in horror. I'm not going to say rude words about things that could happen in, like, I'm not going to specifically name brutal acts because it gets trouble on Twitch in terms of service, but... <laughs> uh, the teens even jumped to this incorrect conclusion themselves. Despite our role of protector, and our direct order to cut out the fireworks, were greeted with disdain and distant ridicule. We're labelled a creep and we're even told our dick is small in an obvious pointer towards the shriveling role of masculinity in society and our own feelings of impotence, out of control, unable to really do anything or be heard. I've also written about how the rope break and the compass come into it. These are, you know, there's a lot of things that happen on day one, aren't there? We essentially went out, told people to stop doing some fires. Um, and that's really, you know, what I've written. There's a few more s statements here, a few more paragraphs about different things. But you can see where I'm going with this. My textual analysis of the piece. You can see where I'm going with this. It's about, is Firewatch about masculinity, confusion in the modern world? Is that what it's about? Continue. And I've done an hour of talking. <laughs> I haven't done an hour of talking, I've done 20 minutes of it. And uh, I can't stay on too, too long today, as I said, because we've got an important day to get on with. I've got to take the dog out to the woods and all sorts. So let's do a day of fire watching. Let's see how it goes. It should be day two this, should, shouldn't it? It's loading, you can't see because my face. Oh, there it is underneath me loading there. Look, oh, down here, down here. Just down here, it's loading. Just there. Oh, I don't know, that cheered me up. I like that. I was pointing down there. Whee. Right, okay, look. Day two. Let's just restart the day because, um, yes, because when we left it last time, we, uh, we left it on for ages and I did loads of talking, so I've got no idea if I've effed it up. Good though, isn't it? I should be loading again, so. Time for me to tell you that we're playing this on the Nintendo Switch, so if it does look like a potato and you've got a powerful gaming PC, then well done you. I don't. I've got an old Mac, an, an old, old Mac, like a rickety old Mac. So I play this uh, through my Switch into the Mac through a cheap capture card, and on stream we are working towards the goal of purchasing a nice modern gaming PC and I'm not really sold on the whole concept yet we've got to dis discuss it and do it as a stream but we at least need to update our, our tech don't we a little bit right here we go then day it's all these pine cones day two bleach 
We had our place raided last night as well. Someone smashed this window. I'm awake. I'm awake. What's your problem? Our problem. Sorry, our problem. That storm knocked out the phone line I used to talk to the service, which means we're cut off. I tried radioing out, and that's not working either. Okay, I'm just going to have to pause because the dishwasher is making a beeping noise in the other room, and I have to turn it off because I can't stand listening to the beeping noise indefinitely. Chores. Ooh. Did you see that? I don't know if you did see it. Everything moved. I shuffled the chair too close to the table and everything moved. Like the telly that I use as a monitor, the lamp that sits on top of the telly that I use as a light, the cat, everything moved. That was that was nearly a full chuff in. Like nearly a full chuff. Let's just check you can all hear me. Full chuff in. Like nearly a full chuff. Yeah, you can hear me. And you can hear the game. Like nearly a full chuff. Yeah, you can hear me. I don't really know why that would be the case. I mean, we've had issues with the radios going out in this area before. Anyway, I'm sending all the lookouts out to check the wire in their areas. Yours is a good hike away. If you find any portion of it down, I can try to get a hold of a ranger and he'll bring someone in to fix it. Okay, I can do that. Where is it? Remember that cave you hiked through yesterday? Yep. Yeah, of course. So, you're going to want to go back there, go through it, and keep going straight to the north when you come out. Will do. Thanks, Hank. Henry. It's Henry. What, you don't like Hank? Yeah, I don't like Hank. But thanks rhymes with Hank. No, it doesn't. Okay, all right. Yeah, there we go. I had a little discussion. I'll just pause for a second. It is interesting that... Uh, when I play this, all these thoughts, you know, all that stuff that I put in that script that I just read out, none of that came up when I was actually playing it. So I might not go into all this detail. Oh, that means this and this could be that. Uh, it all came up when I was walking the dog and I had to note it all down. And today I've got a lot of business to do. I've got to walk the dog. I've also got to do some things, get to watch this football match. I need some time to think and write as well. So uh, <laughs> I hope we get, like, what, what is she changing his name for now, you see? What's she doing that? There's a little thing in that as well, isn't there? And have a little look at the Firefinder. Oh. No, I'm not. It doesn't do anything for me. Can't do anything. Right, so I'm going to go now and do what she said, aren't I? I'm just going to go out. I mean, I feel like there's a lot of stuff in here. And most games that I'm used to playing, little guidebooks and all that, you'd, you'd fuff around with all this stuff, wouldn't you? You'd, like, in Fallout, you'd pick up all the items, at least. Like the dish soap there. That's probably of no use to me, is it? Pick it up. Put it back. Coffee party like that. I could have a coffee. Can't I? Can I just pick it up? Oh. Put it back. So, the you know, instinctively, I want to go and, and do some messing, but there's a big part of me that just says, no, you don't really need to do that, do you? You just need to. Because I don't even pick up that backpack, it does it automatically when I'm out of the door. Look. See? So, I'd, I'd probably just go out. And. This is a game about navigation. There we go. So I'm going to go straight back to these caves that I came from yesterday. And I literally did come from there yesterday. So can I remember from yesterday? Now, in a real world situation, I think I would remember where the caves were. I think I just remember. In a real world. But for some reason, in this game world, I cannot fathom it. Thank God they give me a map, though, eh? Thank God they give me a map. She wants me to go north. These caves. Yeah, I'll be alright. Why don't I sort of just go forward a bit onto the path. Follow it down to the left. And then I'm at the caves. And then I just head north. Let's go. Straight on a bit to the path. Do I want to go to the lake? This is going to be me the whole time. Do I want to do it? Do I want to do it? No, you see, I'm going down the wrong path straight off. That's Jonesy Lake. Have I done that? Other side of the lookout, look. Other side of the lookout. 
Turn into Chuffy Lane. Chuffy Lane. I'm going to walk around it this way just so I make sure I actually go the other side of it. Other side of it. There we are, look. Where's the Chuffy Path? What's that? Fallen tree. Can I... Do so. Yeah. Ooh, report, the wind last night everything. actually tore up some trees near my tower. I know, right? Ugh, it's out of this world. Now, imagine we had a big fire burning. Yeah. Jesus. It's something else. I've seen a still evening kick up 45 mile an hour winds in no time. If that happens this summer, you'll really be in for it. So the winds are an issue. That's really interesting because uh, the way the winds work to rip out a tree like this is they spin the tree. They don't knock it over. They spin it in the wind. The wind spins it and then the roots are ripped out and it just falls. Fast winds. This little Scott's top tip there. Here's another one. Fallen tree. Should we report that? This is the out. Oh, it's the toilet. It smells horrible. Old baseball. I'm not picking up things in the toilet. Why is there a toilet? Why is there a baseball in the toilet? Bear tooth. Put. Thoroughfare. For the lookout. I'm just going to check the map. See if we're on the old. Uh, Oh wait, 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 where's I've, where have I put chat? Now there's a thing. Where have I put chat? I had chat. Where's my chat? Uh oh. You can't operate without a chat. There's chat, right, chat's back. It's back. Uh am I on the right path? Yes. Essentially yes. Yeah? Alright. Let's go. Am I am I confused about my role in in America? Is that what's going on here? The masculinity and the concept of rugged outdoorsman, beer drinker, simple thinker. Is that you know, is that a, a dated concept now? Do I still have a role? Interesting that my boss is a woman, isn't it? And then this winds round in the sort of traditional method of descending mountainous terrain. Rather than a straight line which would be very steep. You go side to side like this, don't you? Wiggle your way down. Easy life. I've got a run button. Right now. What's this over here? Why not? Oh, man, I'm going down. You shouldn't run on things like this, you might fall. We gotta jump over this. Good chuff. Now we're on the way into the caves, aren't we? Just following the path still down, yes. Yes, yes. It's quite pretty, isn't it? It's quite pretty. Deep emerald greens juxtapose against these warm umbers. Down. Oosh. And then she said head north, didn't she? So let's just check that that's where we're going. North. A bit blocked off north, isn't it? What's that? 452, cave's closed. This cave is gated off. It's to stop Spelunkers from dying without getting the keys from the Forest Service office first. Makes sense. Although, Debbie says she lost them like three years ago, so... Maybe it's mysteries are locked away for good. Ah, damn. Yeah, but maybe you can find another one to get your caving kicks in. Oh, this one's so close to home and convenient, though. Aw, oh, sorry, Hank. Hank again. Not called Hank, am I? Called Henry. Simple trip through the caves there. 
survey communication lines north of the canyon. So I'm now in the canyon, so I need to keep heading north, basically, yeah? I mean, it doesn't tell me exactly where I'm going to, does it? Up there at Bear Tooth Point, I imagine there might be bears. There's a cache up there as well, so that, you know, we're definitely going up there at some point, aren't we? Yeah, let's just follow the path, eh? What's the worst that could happen? Not advertising any particular brand of cola there or anything? Just, what's the worst that could happen? Yeah, old okay. gap. Gap in brush. I was thinking about this as well last night. You know, I was saying about how it's arbitrary on, on rails. You know, you come up to an obstacle and press ZR to clear. You come up with an obstacle, press Y to hop, press thing to thing. And I was thinking about it like, it's not that bad. It's, it's a methodology of, you know, presenting your set pieces, your, your, your things in a certain order and maintaining some degree of activity. Like, I was thinking, what if I tried to read, re sorry, knocking this, just pause for a moment for this talking. What if I tried to recreate that, give you more um, option? Like in Zelda, for example, when Link goes and you jump onto Zelda, Breath of the Wild, isn't it? Breath of the Wild. When, uh, when you jump onto the surface, you climb up it just automatically. You don't press Y to climb. And you don't also, the other option would have been to create some sort of, uh, you've got the two control sticks here, maybe some sort of physics-based um, joystick uh, balance. Look at the microphone, sorry balance game involving the two analog sticks maybe these l and r's you've got four of those maybe that could be hand hand foot foot you know maybe there's something in that maybe you could create a really interesting mechanic behind climbing and a really interesting mechanical operation that you have to get good at to be able to do good climbing maybe you could do that but is it necessary i mean in zelda you don't they just bind it all off completely haven't they and you literally just jump on the wall and it climbs for you because in real life if you wanted to just climb up that thing, you just would without thinking. You wouldn't think, oh, now I've got to do the mechanical operation of put my foot, balance and push up under. Like, that's not a game that we play in our minds when we just climb up the thing, is it? You know, if I just climbed up that rock now, I'd just be up it, wouldn't I? I'd just be up it. Oh, the cat. trying to climb up the blinds uh, yeah you just climb up that and it'd be no trouble so when you're deciding in the game which elements to interact with how much of it you know if you give us that freedom like Zelda Breath of the Wild I'll be up off that and I'll be gone I'll be you know that's not what they want in this game they want us to go through a certain order of process you know follow a certain path so it's okay that it's a bit more linear isn't it and it's okay that it's not a completely open world wander around the woods doing what you want uh, the geography has been used the classic Call of Duty style first person shooter geography used just to funnel you down the you know funnel you down the, down the way they want you to not have you wander off uh, fine fine okay it's fine let's say like I said that you wanted to reimagine how to do this uh, when you approach an obstacle should I have a complex mechanical game well no that as I said would be a bit too much wouldn't it be a bit too much for you to code and create as an indie company when your game's not actually about that so you don't want it to be about that otherwise people would be saying oh Firewatch was good I enjoyed the story but you know all that mechanics of all doing the thing you know it'd be a different thing wouldn't it so uh, then I thought to myself well how would I do it then well, I suppose I'd put some interactivity in there put some items so that you feel that you're interacting along the way but not make it too heavy on the mechanics maybe I'll just press Y to jump oh damn it that's what they've done <laughs> so I can understand how they've got to that you know that point I'm not sure it's a perfect answer to these salute you know these issues of interactivity and you know subjective objective interactivity within an environment I love the way that when you're link you can just run up to something and just grab a hole and climb and I love the way that the stamina bar gives it some sort of mechanical balance you know there's something you have to manage other than just I can climb infinitely uh, we were playing Fortnite the other day me and my sister and uh, Chris in our team and I said to a, the team isn't it interesting how we just run up these hills uh, stay, like when you press run you're at the same pace the whole time like if I was physically running up a hill I'd be tired by the top I would slow down there's none of that you just press run you're running at the same pace the whole time same here so there are some things that I just ignored 
for the sake of ease of mechanical operation and other things that are deliberately put in to slow you down to interact with for the sake of feeling that you're immersed in the game yeah it's a, it's a funny balance and an interesting one not part of the art of subtext or anything like that not part of the bigger big ideas but certainly part of the art of game creation there's a path here what am i doing Like it's interesting, isn't it, that when you talk about games, there's a craft to coding them, creating them in the same way as there's a craft to painting a picture, but it's not actually the um, abilities of the craft that we're interested in. It's more the feeling of the art entire at the end, isn't it? So now I'm up, well, I didn't realize I was going up a hill. I'm going up a hill now. Are these the wires? Oh look, there's some wires. Yeah, these are the wires then, aren't they? I'll follow them. Utility pole. Radio it in. Uh, I can see the wire you're talking about. It looks like it's in good shape from here. We'll follow it up to the top of the trail if you can. You can head back as soon as you give me the all clear. Got it. Got it. Okay. Straightforward. Nice. Nice job. I'll follow this wire. Is that fallen or is that just a shadow? It's just a shadow, yeah. It's interesting, this is, that it, uh, it's drawing your attention upward. A lot of the time, running around like this, looking down at the ground, following the path. But this has forced you to look up into the sky. It's just a point I've made. It doesn't look like a very... Like, why wouldn't you just rig that one to there? <laughs> that one to there. Why have you got these posts that go up there and round there? That doesn't seem efficient, does it? Why would you rig that one to there and then that one to there and then that one down there? You just rig that one to there, wouldn't you? Just makes sense. Anyhow. Don't know if we have to go over here, but I'm gonna because I just feel like it. There's something, you know, drawing my attention. Is this deliberate design? Yeah it is. Report the old uh, outhouse. Hey, I found a structure that might have been an outhouse once, I think. So, Whoa, get on uh, the job. You don't need my permission to go to the bathroom. Yeah, but, exactly. You know, use abandoned shitters at your own peril. I mean, uh, I'm in the right area? I do believe. Uh, the comms wire runs for quite a ways. Follow it all the way to the top of Beartooth Point, and if it's not damaged, you can loop around back home. Loop around back home. Had trouble getting home yesterday, so... And it's interesting that it's referred to as home when, you know, she's not... It, does she, we, we don't know much about her backstory. Uh, one of the interesting things I've made in my notes was that she said in her communication with us at the start that... Um, I'm just going to stand here and look at the poll. She said at uh, the start that you come out here to get away from things, so what are you getting away from? And the inference there that I took is that she's... Not immediately, only after I thought about it deeply, <laughs> is that she's there to get away from something, isn't she? Because everyone is. That's what she said. So that's interesting. And it makes me wonder about her character, who we're not given a deep backstory to. Is that because we're allowed to ascribe our own feelings? Sometimes in a, in a piece, in a film, in a book, if you don't know, or in life, this is true in life, if you don't know a lot about someone, they're more mysterious, they're a bit more interesting, and it allows you to put some of your own thoughts and feelings. They might be this, they might be that. This is why uh, in relationships, you're always going out with the perfect person until you get to know them. <laughs> you know, when you first meet them, they're like, wonderful, aren't they? They're, they're, as long as they're attractive to you, all the other stuff that you want in life, you sort of say, oh, they might be that, rubbing your hands, you know, they, 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 might, ha they might do that, they might have that uh, joy, like, they might have that same, share that same passion for music, or they might have that same uh, feeling about politics, or you know what I mean? Like, you're like, this person's great, and then the more you get to know them, as they reveal their personality, you say, oh, actually, well, that thing they said then, I don't agree with that, and we didn't, get on about that and I argued about that and I don't like the way they said this and the way they think that you know those things then start to come in and that's what spoils spoils that's what gives you the real picture of who they are and allows you to make a real um, you know more informed judgment judging people you bad people judging people <laughs> but really it does you know you judge you know you work out what you think about people don't you from knowing them and until you get to know them all those ideas are just available to you for your own some people are positive I feel maybe more hopeful 
uh, or maybe more naive and they apply all those good feelings and ideas to somebody until they let themselves down and that's the kind of the way that works it's true so uh, and we're all human we all let ourselves down from time to time so uh, yeah this disembodied voice you know they've obviously got problems in their past haven't they if they're up there as well I wonder what their problems are I wonder what our relationship is it's just strange and then she's also said uh, I was coming to this at the point she's referred to it as home now not her home but my home you know the place I'm returning to is home she's got a different tower way off I've seen it in the distance apparently uh, is she really there have I, have I just got dementia so we really can't reach anyone any other way than these wires what else do you suggest smoke signals just seems dangerous well, if they don't hear from me for a few days, they'll send someone out, but I'd rather it not come to that. Right. And I wonder if this is still the case, because obviously, like I said, this isn't set in present day, it's set slightly in the past. And even the slight past between the 90s and 2020s is huge in terms of technology. So I wonder if that's still the case, you know. If it weren't for the wires, you'd be cut off. It's a bit ominous, that is, isn't it? A bit ominous. Again, a bit like horror movies, set something up. You know, in a fire situation, you would think that these lines would probably burn down, wouldn't they? You know, set something up in a horror movie, say this is you know something that you could worry about, and then later on it comes back. Oh, do you remember that thing you were supposed to worry about? Now it's going off. Oh, it's bad. Like that sort of aspect, feeling. I'm getting that feeling from playing this. Maybe it's part of the loneliness, the enforced isolation of just my character. And just the person on the radio. Look, it goes all the way up there. Chuff, I've got to go all the way up there. Come on then. Not staying to look at the scenery now. Got a big day ahead of me. The utility pole. We're not radioing that one in. Not radioing that one in. All this brush. Do you remember when Donald Trump said that the reason they had forest fires wasn't climate change? It was because they didn't clear out all the the brush from the forests. <laughs> uh, total misunderstanding of how the ecosystem works there, wasn't it? Total misunderstanding. What am I now? Am I at the top here? I can't get down or what? Why to jump, isn't it? No. What have I done? What have I got? Oh, I just got down this path here, is it? What? How have I chuffed this up? Me you're talking to, so you know I chuff this up easy. Get lost in the... Honestly, honestly, I get lost going home from my local... You know, I get lost... And the thing is, people say, well, how did you get lost on that? If you take a wrong turn by mistake, then all of a sudden you're in a road that you don't know where you are, and then you're lost, aren't you? So of course I get lost going home. Even if I have lived here all my life. What's that? Oh, look. Beer cans with... See the that, that drift? That's my controller drift. On the old Nintendo Switch. Now, it's not the controller I'm using. It's the one that's plugged into the chuffing switch. It's got its own little Joy-Con drift. Switch. Well, it might be this one, maybe. Maybe it is if it's doing it now. Oh, cracking. We're going to ignore the drift. We're just going to pick up the beer cans. Uh, clean up, hold A. Well, offered me, hasn't it? So someone's come up here and they've left beer. This is really strange as well. Okay, so this is what I was going to say. I was going to say this yesterday, or put it in my notes. Uh, I drink the beer. My character, I, me in personal real life, I don't drink beer. I've given up alcohol five years ago. Don't drink it at all anymore. So don't even like pine for it anymore. Don't want it. Feel like when I see the people being really drunk, they're idiots, and uh, I'm better off not being drunk. Better off not feeling it the next day. Yeah, fine. My character in this drinks a lot of beer. We've seen that. Uh, my character in this has also uh, stolen a bottle of whiskey that they found out in the wilds and saved it for later. Am I to assume that I drink all the time? My character in this drinks all the time. And if so, am I to assume that they don't know what they're doing all the time? Or did I smash up my own place yesterday in some sort of fit of rage? Am I suffering dementia and not realising it? Have I been here and left these beers? Who's been here to leave the beers? Who goes out hiking and takes beer? You know, 
hiking people don't really not really they're more outward doorsy uh fitnessy you know they're not out there slugging back the beers in places you have to hike to are they and just two two cans it's a bit weird isn't it very strange bit of a mystery long drop down what and i can't get back oh go on then I have to find another way back oosh although in reality i can climb over that quite easily well i hopped down a drop and now i can't climb back up mm, that is a pickle I, mean, I can just keep hiking but i figured i should let you know in case i get myself trapped out here mm, how adventurous of you I've been doing a lot more climbing out here than I expected. Well, keep your radio charged. I'd hate to one day find a skeleton with an orange backpack at the bottom of a ravine. That's a bit ominous as well, isn't it? That whole horror movie, ominous, you know, seems beautiful and lovely and serene, but also you could you could die. <laughs> End of the wire. Hey, so the wire is definitely down out here. I just found it. Yeah, the thing is, it doesn't look like the wind. It looks like it was cut deliberately. It's snipped clean through, and there's a bunch of beer cans out here. The same beer those girls were drinking. They also left us a, a message. Ugh, these idiots are going to pay. Do they realize this is how people die? I mean, what if something happened to one of my lookouts while this was going on? And God forbid there's an actual fire burning out of control. What do you want to do? I want you to go find them. And then what? I... I haven't thought that far ahead. It's not true. Everything that comes to mind is... Hmm. Let's hear it. Oh, yeah? Hey, I came out here for a breath of fresh air and some adventure. What do you got? I think I want you to just find them and scare the hell out of them. Yeah, I'd make a spooky ghost costume, but they stole my sheets. I don't know. Um... Wait for them to wander off and wreck their camp. Something that would make a teenage girl run home to mommy and daddy. <laughs> I'll find them. Thanks. But I am gonna need a raise. <sighs> Don't hold your breath. I'd start by hiking back towards your tower and just keep an eye out for anything that would lead you to them. Oh, they're big into Red Eagle. <laughs> Great. See if you can find the path they took down from there. Maybe they looped back around towards the lake or something. I doubt they're where they were yesterday, but they obviously can't have gone far. What a weird setup. What a weird setup. So, go to hell, that says, does it? Is that the message that they left? I can't get up there to touch it and to mess with it, frustratingly. But I don't even know if it's painted on or if it's a piece of paper or what it is. Go hell, it says, I think, go hell. I can't see what... Is that an ice cream on it? Is that supposed to be an ice cream cone? I don't know what that is. I don't know what the message is. I don't know who's done it and why. I can't really get much of a read off that. Go to hell. Is it written on the rock? There's a picture of a little man with a hat, even, isn't there? Is it the knickers? Is it the panties? Is it a piece of clothing? I don't know what that is. Okay, so that's confusing me. Yeah, the beer was the same as the teens were drinking, was it? But I don't think it's the teens. I don't think it is. Why would they hike up here to cut that, to put themselves in danger? It just seems weird. Would they have smashed up those two girls? Would they have smashed up my my thing? It seems a bit over the top and aggressive. But I'm assuming, my character's assuming that these young girls are aggressive and that they're mean and that they're dangerous. It's strange, isn't it? And then my compatriot over the radio has said, right, I want you to find them, straight off, straight off, I want you to find the team. I said, it might be them. They said, right, find them. I, we're in judgment now. You know, earlier on I said about judging people, well, we are the judges, uh, not just the judges, the juries, and now the executioners, or the executioners of duty, you know, execute our duty, which I, my duty is now to go and find them and smash up their stuff and scare them. I wouldn't be doing that. I'm supposed to be the authority and the safety out here. So I certainly wouldn't be going to smash up their stuff, even if they had done this. It's definitely not the responsible way to behave. And yet it's the person on the phone that's told me to do that. Very strange setup, isn't it? Very strange series of, uh, of events. Now, where am I? I'm up here. And she said, loop back. I didn't go to cache 20, 
302 there, look. Could have gone to Cash 302. She said loop back by the lake. Could go all the way up to the lookout there. Supply drop. Uh, loop back to the lake and see if they're still around. So there's the lake. So I suppose I'm going to do this, aren't I? Am I going to go... All the way round to the basin. All the way down to the meadow. All the way down to the lake. I don't really fancy that. Can't go back the way I came though, can I? Because I dropped down that drop. They can't have gone far. This is weird. I need to get back to my lookout. If I can get back to the canyon, I can get back to my lookout. I know that. And I have no option. I have to keep going, don't I? I can't go back. Feels like I'm going to be walking around now for an hour and I need to get going walking the dog in the real woods in a minute. So, <laughs> At least you can save this, eh? Alright, let's have a crack at it then. Let's just go for a walk. What was that then? Something came up on the thing. Right with that pole. I've already lost my bearings. <laughs> already lost my bearings. Sort of heading the wrong way, aren't I? I want to head north and then east. I want it there, down there. That's what I think, anyway. Or is this the long drop? I'm just running back to the long drop, aren't I? Oh, I'm a div head. So that's the long drop. Can't do anything about it. I'm on the wrong side of the long drop. So let's follow it up. But you can see you can follow it up and then round like that, can't you? It definitely is, like, you know, it's not open world, does it? It definitely wants me to go somewhere, but I don't quite know exactly where I'm supposed to. Oh, around here, look, there you go, see? When you get it, you're just fine, you're on, on rails, aren't you? I've got to stop saying that, otherwise it'll get annoying for you, won't it? It's good things it's on rails. Here's a bit, but you can climb up there. Can't climb up anything else, though. On rails, right? Fine. I mean, I'm supposed to be looking for these girls as well, aren't I? I'm committing a crime against them, which I don't really fancy doing. They look like gravestones. I don't know. Like ominous gravestones. Supply drop, Jonesy Lake. Well, I don't need a supply drop, and I'm heading back to the lake. So there we go. Down the rock formation. Oh, a little bit of parkour. What's that? I mean, that is horrible. There's stuff. an abandoned pack out here. And it's not one of the teens? No, it looks like it was lost a long time ago. Well, you could always pilfer it for supplies. No, thanks. She's suggesting you steal it. No, it's horror movie stuff. It looks ominous. Plus, uh, it's actually not, <laughs> you know what's funny about it? I found a dog's lead in the woods not too many days ago from yesterday and uh, I took it with me all the way around the walk and at the end I hung it on the fence right at the start of the walk. So if you'd gone there and lost your dog's lead, you'd be like, oh, there it is. It's funny, isn't it? Someone's put it right there where we can find it. 
So uh, maybe someone's done that with the backpack. Maybe. Maybe it's just polite behaviour. Have I got to go and find the supply drop and get the ropes now? Oh, I've got a rope, apparently. Haven't I? ZR, attach rope to hook. Have I not got a rope? Do I need to go back to the supply drop and get me rope? Gosh, if this is the case and I've... Cash was over there. Look, cash was over there. I could have got the cash. I'm on the wrong side of the big drop now, though, aren't I? I'm just going to head up to the supply drop and see if there's a rope. And if this is the case, I'm not enjoying that sort of gameplay of having to run back and forth just for busy work. But... Maybe something will happen. I mean, I could pilfer it for supplies. Maybe that bag had a rope in it. What have we got here? Thoroughfare supply drop. What is supply drop? Oh, look. Supply cash. They're all one, two, three, four, you chuffers. Moss Peak, Two Forks, Spruce, nothing in any of them. Useless. So now I'm heading back to try and get the rope from the cache. Am I? I come down the drop thing though, didn't I? Is this just me? You know, do you know what? No spoilers, but if you are in chat and you do know that I'm being an idiot, then oh, what's this? Yeah, if you do know that I'm being an idiot and wasting all of our time, then you can tell me that. Uh, no spoilers, but. Hey, I'm out at a ravine. What's this thing that spans across it? That is how you get to my sector. No kidding. Well, let me hike over. Well, it's locked up and mainly for emergencies. I've never actually used it. Rangers use it from time to time, but that's it. Help! Oh, God, it's an emergency! Oh, really? Yeah, I, I, got, um, I got eyes on a tornado. I got to get out of here. Sounds tornado like a tunnel. in the heart of the Rockies? Yes! I'm not even complaining about being called Hank, even though it's not my name. Bit weird. So yeah, so this has been unsuccessful, and I'm in the wrong place. So I'm going to go down here, follow my direction, and then follow it around to the left. I'm going to try and get to that cache. Get some rope. Is there not a cache down there? Oh no, you can't get down there. That's the problem, isn't it? And shouldn't I have a rope in my bag? Isn't that like, you know, standard? But I have been shown by the game that, you know, you go and get a rope out of this box and then you use it to go down the thing. So I'm assuming it wants me to repeat the same action as yesterday, seeing as I have the same obstacle. Just a little bit of quiet walking around now. Am I 
I've got the wrong, oh, I'm going the wrong way again, hold on, look, I feel it instinctively, the sun's going wrong, what's that blue in front of me? Yeah, I've gone on too far, have I not? Oh, long drop, right. I gotta tell you, all this climbing and jumping, it's pretty invigorating. Just wait for the rest of the summer when you'll be sitting on your fat ass 14 hours a day. Right, so I've definitely taken a long drop here, so I can't go back that way. So I can't get to the cache. Maybe I've buggered it up by not getting the rope already. Two miles to the through fair in the north. Doesn't matter, because I'm not going there. This way. Two Forks Fire Lookout and Jonesy Lake. This is the way. This is the way. Good parkour. Has this bag got a rope in? Because, you know, I need a rope, essentially. ZR to swipe. All right, I see. Look, swipe. I just wasn't close enough. Brilliant. Brian Goodwin's backpack. Oh, has he got his name on it or something? Look at that. Oh, yeah, it says Brian Goodwin. Brian Goodwin. So that's not the teens. I took a picture of myself by accident. Am I an idiot? Well, I am flush with ropes now. And that I'm just going to pause that. Also, uh, I took a photo with the camera. It wasn't just to sort of like, you know, random thing, was it? So I think there's something in that. Also, it sets the tone. Maybe it's a, like, maybe that is a clue for later. But also, it sets the tone for the time again, doesn't it? Nowadays, you have a mobile phone, don't you? Not those wires overhead. Nowadays, you have a mobile phone to take your pictures, not a Insta snappy. I remember the days when we used to use those cameras. Uh, they were like the most modern thing, you know, instant cameras they were called. And what you could do is, you, or dispose, no, disposable cameras, sorry, that was what they were called. Back in the day when it was good to use cheap plastics to make disposable items instead of things that last. Uh, you'd use them for the, just the duration of one camera film. Back in the day you had a film for your camera and it had like, like little pictures on it. The, but look, forget it. Anyway, it's the old way of doing it. And it reminds us that that's where we are. Pack was full of them, in decent condition too. That's lucky. I mean, there's there's enough rope here that I could just leave them hooked up. I think. Oh, get this! This uh, pack came with one of those cardboard single-use cameras. With pictures left? Yeah, he only used three or four. Neato. Thank you, Brian Goodwin. Wait, wait, who? The bag had the name Brian Goodwin sewn into the top. Huh. Do you know him? Yeah, I just haven't heard that name in a few years. I'll reply quick. That's my radio button. Anyway, yeah, Brian Goodwin. Oh. He was stationed in two forks, oh, yeah, your lookout, with his dad Ned three summers ago. Great kid. You can bring children out here? No. You know, I'm not a stickler for rules. They took off halfway through the summer. Why? Where did they go? I don't know. I never really hit it off with old Ned. And, um, one day they were just gone. Sucks. Yeah? But anyway, so it goes. People Have, disappear uh, out here, huh? with that camera. Try not to snap anything that would scar a photodome employee. I don't know. I got a lot of hiking to do. Might get bored. Well, I'm bored as rocks, so I'll keep you company while you find those girls, huh? Okay, I mean, this is turning out even more weird. So, Brian Goodwin disappeared. Oh, sorry, I'm yawning. Brian Goodwin disappeared. They don't care that he disappeared. They don't care his son disappeared. I've got his bag. Left it hanging on a, ro on a rock. No one disappears and leaves it hanging up there. Someone's going to put that there. For me. To find. Specifically. I could have a look at the things on the camera. Like, use the disposable camera. I'm not going to take a picture because I've only got 18 left, but um, it feels like it wants me to take one here, doesn't it? Because it asked me to, but I'm not going to. But, um, what a strange... I want to see what's on the camera, really. That would be... How do I get the camera out again? Yeah, it's that one. Okay. Like, what a strange thing. It feels like a horror movie again. It feels like I'm being set up, doesn't it? Feels like I'm being set up. 
fresh ropes in the bag as well. Why would there be fresh ropes in the bag? And why would you only have that in your... You know, why would, just doesn't make sense. It's too, too handy, isn't it? Attach rope. I'd love to. Thanks, got this degree really close. Rebel. Like if you really were repelling, then you'd have a carabiner you know, and a special way of working them right through it. Just climbing down, essentially, aren't I? Oh, I can climb back up now. That's good. Again, in real life, I'm just jumping down that. Climbing back up to it, you know, by just climbing up a bit of a slope. I think they should have made more of these obstacles, maybe more impassable, because it just seems silly. But hey, it's part of the game, isn't it? I'm in the game. I always wonder as well, I'm just going to talk this <laughs> nonsense quickly. Uh, in focal points, in focal range, like when you're looking out of your eyes, this is something I used to have to think about for ASMR, which lens do you use? Like my eyes have got a certain range they can see, and I can see periphery to about here. I'm looking, <laughs> wait, wait, look straight ahead. I'll look straight ahead at you, and then I can see this, yeah, gone there. About there, I can see periphery to about here. But then it goes out, doesn't it, in the world. I can see the whole world around me like that. I, here, you're limited to what you can see. You move around with your little stick to have a look. But it's a game about vistas, about outdoors, about the what. I wonder if the choice of lens, of focal, you know, how much you're seeing in, a, in an image, in a rectangle. I wonder if that was thought about carefully. You know, I wonder if it matters. Focal, size, length, you know, image, all that business. Talk like a twaddle, don't I? One, two, three, four. This one's one five nine zero already. Is that important? Because the other one was nine 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 nine, wasn't it? Makes me wonder. Nineteen fifty. It's a beautiful song by King Princess. That is. I love it when we play nineteen fifty. So cold, let me hold. Oh, I've missed a cash. I could have. There's a cash. I've updated my map with the other cache. Guess who came out with dirt? I'm just going to take it and see if it reads it for me. X to read no. Oh, hello. I just have to move my face. Dave. Ron. Ron, it says at the top. Dave. This is inside the cache. What were the names of those people again that went missing? I've forgotten already. Dave, guess who's going out with Debbie next week? No, not that shit heel, Steve. It's your man, Ron. I went up to check the new guy at Two Forks and heard him talking to himself more than usual for LOs. So I figured I'd stay away. So what he's saying is he went up to see where I'm Two Forks. I don't know if this is a new note or if it's referring to the previous occupants of Two Forks, but they were talking to themselves. So maybe he was talking to his son. I don't know. I figured to stay away. Remember when you saw Chimney Rock having himself in that hammock? Having himself? I'm starting to think the Forest Service only picks the deranged and perverted. That's a bit horrid. Except for us, of course. We're the creme de la creme. Let's toast to Deb at the spot. Ron. Is Deb, who's going out with Debbie? Is Debbie the woman on the radio, I think? So, but it's interesting that she's got capitalised there, Deb. Is she real? Strange. Debbie, again, capitalised at the top. Ron, who's Ron? Uh, should I keep it or put it back? Dropped it on the floor. I don't want to drop it on the floor. Go on then, I'll keep it. What the hell? Fossilised claw. Getting dodgy, isn't it? Fossilised claw. Can I radio the fossilised claw? Hang on, pick up. 
right here. Uh, someone found a fossil and put it in a cash box. Oh, really? Uh, oh, really? I'm trying to pick up that loose stone. No, no, I can't. Weird. It's a stone. Looks to have a bit of a crack in it. Can't radio that one in. Is that it for the cash? What a weird cash. What about the note? Can I can I radio the note? And what are those, what's that? Photo dome. That's where they said I should get the photos developed. There's all a little bit of stick in it. And for why? And what is this update to the bear territory? Bear tooth point? What? It's just red. I've just already walked those. I don't get it. I'm not really into that cash. I don't get it at all. I don't see what the point in that is. Right, am I going to Two Forks Lookout or Jonesy Lake? I'm heading back to the lake, aren't I? Oh, well, my face is still off, sorry. That's my face. You like my face. Oh, hey, oh, hello. <laughs> hello, capital K. Sorry I missed the chat. There you are. Ron Weasley, obviously. <laughs> Isn't that Ed Sheeran? Ed Sheeran. Ron Weasley. Right. We're walking. Uh, I should fill you in quickly on the, uh, the details so, of. Oh. Did you break any hearts back in Colorado when you took this job? She's talking to me randomly. I myself have chosen to never get attached to anyone who would miss me, but I know I'm a bit of an outlier. I'm actually married. But you're here. She's sick, and I shouldn't be here, but I am. I. I'm sorry. Henry, what is it? We'll get into it. Okay. Well, in the meantime, you are here, and it's beautiful, and escaping isn't always something bad. Yeah, sure. Look, I gotta go do a thing, but I'll have a radio. Okay, call me if you need to. A bit weird. Uh, interesting points to make here. That uh, I had the option of not telling her then, but I chose to, and then it decided not to tell her for me. <laughs> It was like, I, I thought I'd tell her, you know, I'd go straight in with the honesty. I'm married, and the answer came up, she's sick. I said, yeah, go, I'd do, oh, what's wrong with her? Oh, I'm not going to tell you. I'm like, what? I, was, I, was, I chose to tell her. I wonder what would happen if I chose not to tell her. Would you have said, oh, she's got dementia? I, do you know what I mean? It's a bit weird. And that's the end of that conversation, even though it came out of nowhere. And I was like, am I going to have a conversation? No, no, we're not really. No find the things. I'm still trying to head down to the lake. A bit lost now again, obviously. Uh, okay, I want to go just sort of south down there and then, uh, and then that way, which will be to my right, won't it? South down there and then to the west. Or compass directions. I zoom in. Where's the map? Oh, there it is. Yeah, okay, heading the right way now. Yeah, to Wapiti Meadow. Yeah, and then we'll go south through the meadow down to the lake. Seems right, yeah? Yeah. What the hell? We don't know where they are, so, you know, all roads lead to Rome. It's not the right use of that expression. We don't know where they are. So, yeah, I'll just fill you in what's been happening... Uh, I made some notes and I read them out at the start of this broadcast about what I thought about this game, whether this game was some sort of artistic allegory for being an American male, uh, a traditional American male, an 80s beer drinking, maybe truck driving. We haven't been told. We, oh, we did drive a truck earlier, didn't we? We saw we had a truck in the first episode. You know, beer drinking, truck driving, uh, sort of, I don't want to use stereoty stereotypical, standard, you know, middle American... Uh, average American man, uh, straight, married, like, you know, not really thoughtful in many ways. 
Um, and now we're like in the game. Our wife is lost her mind to our perception. Uh, we don't understand women very well. Maybe that is an allegory for stuff like this. I'm wondering if it's allegorous, allegorical for other things. And also, there's this horror overtone, isn't there? Which is continued through day two, finding these strange objects, feeling lonely and out and vulnerable. Uh, me being potentially, yeah, his wife's poorly. Yeah, his wife's poorly because she's got dementia. So I wondered if that was like, think about this, yeah? What does he feel? He feels his wife is losing her mind. He feels his wife doesn't know him anymore. He feels his wife doesn't know herself and other people. He feels his wife isn't really herself, doesn't he? He feels that she, you know, he married in the 80s and the 70s, 70s 80s, they got married. They had this little apartment, this perfect Americana life, uh, going to the bar together and, and then it all changed, hasn't it? What's changed? Society has changed. Society has changed, hasn't it? Uh, women's place in society has changed. The things women do has changed. Maybe men's ability to understand women has changed. And maybe he feels he can't understand them. Maybe she's not got dementia. Maybe it's an allegory for, you know, maybe it's a metaphor for how women in society are now beyond the the ken the unnatural and the natural understanding of men folk do you know what i mean like maybe the average american beer drinking pub going truck driving man thinks i don't even understand my wife anymore or I, I don't even understand women what they're thinking and what they're doing uh, you know maybe it's something about that um, and then i also wondered whether i'm the one with dementia whether my character's got dementia talking to this voice on the radio wandering around lost in the woods you know whether I'm the one with the dementia. I don't think that's the case, but it's an interesting way to look at it. Um, and then, knocking on from this theory about women, uh, my place in this world that I've come to, uh, my place is of protector, isn't it? I'm the Firewatch guardian, the guardian of the Mother Earth, of the, um, of the, you know, the mother country of, of America. And it's very American. I'm out in the American wilds, the Rocky Mountains. I'm a pioneer again. I'm a cowboy again, aren't I? I'm back to being what we understand men are. The strong, silent type, the cowboy, the rugged outdoorsman. We're back to a much more comfortable version of masculinity for the traditional man. So that's interesting. And yet, in this place, the overarching voice is of a woman. Is of a woman guiding us. Uh, an unknown woman, someone that we don't understand again. Uh, not even we don't even see her we haven't even met her it's very interesting concepts that may or may not may or may not be uh, you know thingy they may, it might just be in my head it might just be rubbish in my head and then the other but this is my art analysis this is what my brain does I've written a bit of a script about it I was talking about it earlier uh, and we're going to continue to do this and make a video at the end of all this and then of course I'm following these teenagers these teenage girls do I understand these teenage girls no do they they ridicule me they ridicule me and make me feel impotent like, you got a small willy eye you're a, you're a um, uh, creepy guy like that's what they said to me when I told them to not set the fireworks off so you know fireworks as well 4th of July Americana again you know the beers the, the boom box there's a lot of contrast in these um, concepts and my character's position against those concepts and it's almost I feel like I'm the protagonist in the horror like the antagonist I'm the um, I'm the horror I'm the person that's creeping around the woods chasing after teenage girls I'm the bad man right you know it's a bit interesting isn't it it's a bit interesting those ideas and concepts no trespassing hey uh, Delilah what do you got you found him uh, no not yet why would there be a fence out here? Uh, because sometimes hikers go ass over tea kettle when on a trail. So the Forest Service would put up a big chain link fence? A chain link fence? Yeah, it looks like it surrounds a huge area. Huh, that's weird. Who are they keeping out of here and why? Geez, I don't know. Maybe it's biologists, you know? Well, they don't want people traipsing on their precious lichens. But 
but yeah, no idea about what's going on with that. Let me spot Chance to say Do you think those things. girls could be behind this fence? Mm, well, having once been an ornery young woman, the last thing I would do is climb a fence. Especially if I knew I was in trouble. Yeah, I, I don't even know how I would get in. It's really strange that that's out there, by the way. Yeah, weird. Well, and that's it. It's just weird. We're the protectors of the forest. And we're going to accept that somebody's been out here. She wouldn't just... Like, that doesn't make sense to me. If she really is the, you know, chief fire, whatever, marshal, we're... You, know, you can't just say, oh, someone's come out in the forest and put up a fence, not on my watch. Uh, yeah, go do fuff, fuff all about it. No, you'd be in there. You'd be... I'm coming down now. We're sending someone out to fix the wires, but we're not sending someone out to discuss the fact. I'm not even going to radio into you know, head office and ask them about US code 1863. It's in the way of a path. Where's my map? Let's have a look at the map. So I can't go down to the Wapiti Meadow because the fence is in my way. Is that what we're saying? So I'm now going down Thunder Canyon again. Down, back down that route. Is that what we're saying? I have to... I'm guessing. Find the teams. Which way am I going now? South. Just not going to have to. Oh, no, I'm just going to have to go south. Yeah, south. Must be compass. South. Can I zoom in on the map and walk at the same time? No. Looks good to me. Okay, lower map. Let's go. Big old fence. See, it's weird, isn't it? It's. I thought this firewatch was going to be all, um, like, meditative. Uh, what's the word? Um, like, peaceful scenarios. I thought it was going to be a sort of, like, game about peace. Do you know what I mean? About coming to terms with things in a peaceful way. <laughs> We're doing that. I'm trying to go south, aren't I? South. But it seems to be more of a mystery. I've played a game called Kona in the past, which is a very interesting game. Uh, walking simulator, mystery, like you're the detective finding all these things and piecing the clues together. It's a bit like that, isn't it? It's a bit like that. Being a detective in my own story of broken minds. So let's just head south down the path. Might as well. I'm looking for the teens. I can head up Thunder Canyon back to the lake. That's my only other option. Because there's a fence there. I mean, that seems right, doesn't it? Seems right to me. Go on then. Maybe there'll be something else to radio in in a minute. Certainly much more pretty out here, isn't it? What does she have? What? All right, yeah. She's got Alzheimer's. Like, um, dementia. Oh. How old was she? Is she? She's alive. She's with her family in Melbourne, Australia. She's 43. Fuck. Yeah. What was it like when you guys found out? We were scared shitless. We went straight to the doctor after her first spell or whatever. They diagnosed her and we were both just very scared. I can't really tell when Julia is scared. She just gets quiet. She was very quiet. What is that the conversation? I've gone the wrong way by mistake, you see, so I have to go back this way now. Uh, and that's the end of the conversation, it seems. I mean, she didn't say anything in response to that, which was weird. The exposition's cringe. Well, I'm wondering, right, I'm wondering if it... Is it, ex, it is exposition in a way, isn't it? It is exposition. Like, they're, you know, on the surface, just telling you this sort of uh, story, this this tragic story. But is it... I'm having all, a hell of a time getting this fucking flapjack off his ass and out to repair that wire. <laughs> she don't care about the dis, the exposition anymore, does she? She decided that she's, she's given up on my feelings. I was going to say, is it that... Uh, my wife has dementia or is it like that i have dementia my character and i'm just finding it hard to piece my world together 
Is that what it? I'm, maybe it's just me and my brain, but I'm not sure about these things. I'm not sure about anything. It's left me feeling unsure about everything. Flapjack, ha ha, want me to go back. I'm not sure where to go from this burned forest. From this burned section of forest, I have no idea where to go. Their trail is pretty cold at this point. Hmm, you're out by Mule Point. No one would camp out in the fireweed. Well, I want you to stay out there as a favor to little old me. My pleasure. <sighs> okay, we know these young women are sloppy. They must have left some sort of trail. So now we're assuming it's definitely the young girls, and I'm going to be like Sherlock Holmes. And I'm going to find some sort of trail. Now, if I was out in the woods, I'll tell you what, if I was a woodsman, I would, uh, I see very cold. Yeah, but do I, am I, what I mean is like, am I, let me pause that. Am I cognizant of a person with dementia? With seeing it through my eyes, maybe in the real world, I'm in like, you know, a normal, maybe I'm in a facility and I'm like, oh, this is in my mind. Do you know what I mean? Maybe I'm lost in the world and uh, the only connection with reality is this radio and in through there is reality and they're coaxing me and guiding me do you know what i mean it, it could be a bit of a one of those couldn't it don't think it is don't think it is but the way that um the way they brought up the concept of dementia early I'm just going to disappear my face for a little second while i say some words oh i've moved that the way they um deal with dementia early like they present it to us but they present it to us as a series of text like options don't they they say this is the backstory this is what happened to you at the same time they cut between me doing things in today's world like getting in a car and driving off to the woods and then it's like cut with these text things and so it makes me think oh that whole dementia thing's a bit weird it's a bit it's not in color it's not in pictures it's just ideas that have been suggested backstory Interesting backstory, but whose backstory? And how do I relate to it as a character? Um, by going out to the woods. You know, my wife's got this dementia problem. I've decided to chuff off to the woods. It's a bit weird, isn't it? Yeah, no, no, she... You know, it says... It tells us that she's got dementia. But I'm the one that's out in the woods that's confused and lost. <laughs> that's, what, that's the facts of it. Um, and then, like I say, maybe it's... On the, on the surface, maybe she does have dementia and maybe it's used as an, an allegory for our inability to understand women and their, their changing place in society, their changing mind, their changing psyche. And, you know, maybe she hasn't got dementia. Maybe she's just decided to go and live somewhere else and I'm having a breakdown. Do you know what I mean? Like, maybe men in today's society think women are, like, crazy and can't understand them. Like, maybe, do you know what I mean? Like, maybe there's some, some element of that. That's what I think anyway. And that's why I think it's weird. Do you know what I mean? Like, do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean, mate? But uh, what I actually think is weird is I'm now being provoked by this disembodied female voice uh, that I don't... I, I trust her as a player because she's my guiding voice. Like, she's my navvy, isn't she, essentially, in this? But So I'm instinctively, as a player, going to trust her. But does my character... Not, I don't even know this person my character doesn't. Should they trust her? Is this a correct? You know, should I be chasing these young girls oh. around the forest? How'd you meet? We met at the bar. Mm, the birthplace of modern romance. The birthplace of modern romance. Yeah, she's being sarcastic, but actually, um, I would suggest probably eighty percent of relationships in eighties and nineties America started in either a bar or a club. You know, do you not think, like, you know, where do people go to meet people when they want to have a new relationship to the social environments where you meet the people? It's probably quite popular, probably quite popular, probably nothing um, strange about it. But um, more specifically in the 80s and 90s, I would say, uh, where this game is set or when their backstory is set. But uh, and also very typical, like middle America, Americana again, isn't it? I walked over and asked her what her major was because I thought she was a student, not a prof. Smooth. That's me. I did make the first move, though. Aw, oh, you were brave. I was drunk. Yeah, that's our little backstory. I got to choose those options as we went in, didn't I? Supply drop. I got lost again. I'm going the wrong chuffing way again, aren't I? I've got myself turned around. I'm going the wrong chuffing way again. 
Is that right? Have I done that? Or is it that... Um, did I turn myself around? Or is it that this is some sort of spooky forest? Is it a spooky forest? <laughs> Do you think? It's not, is it? It's not supposed to be like... They haven't gone that far into the horror aspects as to make this like a Blair Witch Forest. Forest. That would be really harsh on you, wouldn't it? Oh, man, I'd love to make games. I've got such a drive in me to express ideas. I bet games are a great place to do it. Uh, what a good game would be is to have this system of map reading and then just to make the game force you, like the Blair Witch, to just go around in circles and for the map to be completely useless. That would be brilliant, wouldn't it? Are we supposed to relate to these characters? Good question, Nigel. Um, I Did think... your wife's illness have anything to do with you taking this job, or...? Did you just fall prey to the service's big recruiting push? I think that, uh... The... I have to investigate further. I haven't done the investigation yet. I don't know who made the game. I don't know the, um... The gender and the political persuasion or any of that of the people that made the game. So I have to look into that. But I do think that the majority of gamers... We've had Gamergate, we've had all that. But, you know... People who make games, make them in the main for the majority of gamers who are in the main, uh, probably between 15 and 30 and male. Like, you know, in terms of like majority, not in terms of diversity, of course. It's a silly thing to say that, you know, most people are men that play games. But maybe we are, maybe it's designed to be viewed through, well, it certainly has been designed to be through, viewed through the prism of a man, because I am a man. The, not me, the character who's doing that. I'm already internalising my character. Um, but we weren't, I think it's interesting, we weren't given the option to choose a character. We didn't design our own hairstyle. You know, in some games, more when you role play, you get that option. It's a, it's a blank canvas that the story is then put upon. The protagonist can be male, female, this, that, the other. It works for the story. With this, the story is hinged upon our character being this... And this is why I think it's more allegorical for other things, why I think it's got more subtext, is because they've written it. Let's remember this is a narrative game. So it's not just like someone said, oh, I've got a good controller thing for climbing. Let's make a game about climbing and 10 levels where you get to the top. It's not that. It's a game about story and putting ourselves, the reader, in the position of protagonist in a way that you can't do with a book or a film. Obviously you can, you do do with a book and a film, but this has this extra layer of interactive gameplay, doesn't it? So we are uncovering the story in the same way as you would when you read a book. And it's us that's doing it, but we're doing it through, you know, we're controlling a character. So are we supposed to relate to the characters? Yes. In so far as um, when you read a book, uh, the experience of the reading of the book is seeing the world through their eyes in a way. You relate to them in a way. Do you have to like them and get on with them and believe? I suppose you have to believe in them as characters, as a first point. You should, in order for them to be good characters, you need to believe in them. You know, that's good writing, isn't it? That's why we've been given depth, backstory, um, little things like the picture on the desk and, you know, little hints of realism, uh, that's writing where it's unseen writing where you write a character, you write what they did in school and what their favorite music is. And it might not go into the actual piece, the game or the book, but you know it as the author because you've written the backstory of these characters in your mind. You've created these characters in the full and then you're using them in your story. It's like a separate ex extra bit of writing that happens. And so I believe that that is supposed to be the case here. Um, but it's also important to note that certainly um, what I said earlier in today's broadcast about relationships that uh, you project your feelings onto blank canvases so if um, it happens in therapy you know if you feel angry about your mother then you might get angry at the female therapist because you're projecting your feelings about your mother onto her uh, that's like a Freudian therapy concept yeah, you know it's a real thing that happens so in this you're given very little information about the disembodied voice over the radio and it allows you to project your feelings um, and I suppose from the point of view of I am actually a man <laughs> uh, but also our protagonist the man uh, but we're all uh, children we've all had a mother so I guess the disembodied female voice to the widest possible extent would be a mother figure I guess and we can relate to that so in certain aspects, you would probably, you know, when you say about the cringy dialogue, 
Um, some of the writing, uh, I guess, let's be honest, um, I'm not dissing the writing. I haven't finished reading it, but I say reading in terms of like, you know, reading a book, reading a game, playing the game, reading a film, playing the film, watching the film. It's all reading the text, isn't it? You know, interacting with it. Uh, I think maybe these characters develop more. Maybe they don't. I don't know. But uh, there's a certain, there's an element of naivety in that if you are a really experienced author and all those things about character design that I talked about earlier, uh, you do it. That's part of your craft. That's what makes you a good author isn't it your ability to do that and uh the limitations in certain aspects of the game you know in a book you can write three or four chapters about just whatever you want in whatever way you want here you've got to get this game moving through we can't have 10 chapters about henry before you do the game so you can relate to him you just got to have as much as you can fit in in these spaces and with these visuals and these you've got different things yeah um so uh yeah, a lot of um, interesting ideas about character and relating to them. Uh, yeah, and the naivety of a an that was what I was going to say. A game designer, writer for a game. I've I've met people who write for games, and they are not people who code for games. In in <laughs> sometimes they can be, can't they? I guess they're both. Everyone's a bit of everything. If you want to be, anyone can be anything. But the people I've met in the industry who specifically call themselves writers for games in this context they are like writers they've written a book and they've written a play and they've also written the story for the game and they're on the crew so when the people that are coding the game say in this level we're going to have these quests can you write the stories behind them absolutely we've got them here we've already written the characters sheets so this is what you would probably want to use for this do you know what i mean they have those sort of writers in-house in bigger teams and even in smaller indie teams and of course bringing that back this is a narrative game so they've thought hard about the writing it's an important feature of the game but i also believe that the mastery of writing because i've met and i'm not dissing them, <laughs> I'm saying, I'm not dissing them. i've met people who do this as a job but i don't believe i've met the um uh charles dickens's the agatha christie's i mean maybe i have you know, maybe some of the people I've met are such fantastic writers that in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, their games will be perceived as magnificent writing. But in today's day and age, if you're at that peak of writing, uh, not only, I guess, I would expect you to have a lot more experience than young people making games, young people making games, indie developers, but uh, maybe you're working on, you know, Game of Thrones or maybe you're being headhunted by um, Hollywood scriptwriters maybe not now maybe games are more you know maybe the top gaming companies can pay you more but what i'm saying is that if you're a small indie team and you're working on a game like firewatch you can probably do a really good job of writing the game you've probably got a really good writer on your team but will they be the um you know we're used to such high sophisticated writing because of the amount of money pumped through the media um films you know we critique films very heavily on their writing don't we very heavily and so they have a high standard to ascribe to come up to so that's what our, our bar is essentially films video books media you know the stuff that we're used to if it's not coming up to this high bar of cultural standard then if it's an indie game and it's only quite getting here then that's not so bad because it's probably only a team of like one maybe two people who are you know maybe between the ages of 20 and 30 that have done the writing it's probably not a uh, um you know a 30 group 30 person group of highly paid um you know super experienced professionals maybe there's some good and bad in that maybe there's some good in the naivety maybe some people are really skilled and have yet to bring it out um, and maybe uh it's hard to get it all out in a game maybe they need exposition as well maybe they need exposition maybe they've said to them look can you <laughs> make this bit more like this maybe there's a, a, a you know a group choice maybe the who knows but um, I guess I'm saying I'm giving them a bit of leeway for being a small indie group and for not being a um, uh, a big studio. But also, but also, uh, I'm not saying that you won't get magnificent artists writing small indie games. Of course you will. I'm not saying that you won't get magnificent writing in small indie games. Of course you will. Uh, and this still has chance to show us some more. So. Um, 
but yeah, I don't know exactly. Sometimes I don't know exactly what they're driving at. I know there's exposition in terms of pick up the rope, do this, and your wife's been sick there, but I don't know exactly if they're trying to say this is about mental health or this is a horror game and here's some mystery. So I don't know, maybe we'll find out. And it's now 4.15, so I've only got... Problem is today, of course, England are going to play football and we are, you know, I've got to go and watch that football. I've got to deal with all the um, walking the doggy and all that stuff. So we're going to run another 45 minutes. We're going to hopefully get to the end of the day. But thankfully, look, we can save it. I'm going to save it now just in case. <laughs> and when resume. it comes to, you know, how the hell you ended up out here. Quick, talk to her on the radio. Put the map away. Um, I saw the job in the paper and figured, you know, what the heck? What the heck? I've got no ties and no life. Better go spend what's left of it in utter loneliness. <laughs> Something like that? Now, thanks to last summer, the bump in Forest Service budget actually allowed for us to advertise for the job. Glad it worked. What happened last summer that accounted for this uh, windfall? Jeez. I mean, the federal government almost let Yellowstone National Park burn to the ground? Ring a bell? Yellowstone is like, what? I'm just going to pause that and bring my face back for a second. Uh, I don't know if that's true. Did Yellowstone burn down? Did Because um, this is set historically, isn't it? It's not set in today's day and age. So did that happen? I don't know. You'll have to tell me. Um, I wasn't... <laughs> yeah, it wasn't anticipated. I'm oh, to answer the question. But the thing is, I can't show you because I'm not so good at my windows, am I? This is... I've got a notes window over and this. I can show you, but I'll just, let's not mess with the windows now. They're all working. Um, but I... Uh, Oh, that's another note I should say actually is I've been messing with the sound settings so um, I've been trying to shuffle it look it in the edit shuffle it hopefully it's better maybe it's not uh, we're gonna you know as a team keep trying to work on that um, yeah and I've written in my notes here I've written a page actually when I scroll down it's like three pages of uh, just that sort of ideas in-depth thinking subtext art uh, and I've ascribed, I said this at the start of the broadcast, but I'll give you a quick recap. I've ascribed all these ideas onto it myself. I go walking the dog and I think about it, and then I write my script. And I'm going to make a video at the end that's going to be just that, you know, a sort of art exposition exposition of, of this game. Uh, there might not be true ideas. I might be putting ideas from my brain onto it, and the authors might not have intended that. It might not be about uh, a man's place in American society. It might not be about how a man views female entities in American society. So I hope one day to question the authors on that exact topic and get their ideas. And it might be that, I said this at the start, you know, maybe you put your own, maybe subconsciously ideas go in. Maybe the culture around you helps feed them in. Or maybe it's just me and I'm mad. <laughs> Um, it's perfect. Now, I think if it ever goes out of sync, turning the A7 off again in OBS seems to fix it. Okay. Okay. Well, um, I'm going to just believe in the perfection and that sounds good because um, it has been a right faff trying to make it work. Uh, look, I see I turned that lamp on then. Do you notice the difference? No, it doesn't make a difference. 15 miles um, away. Why would they do that? Well, the short story is that for 60 years, we got very good at not letting forest fires happen. And then about 15 years ago, they decided that forest fires in wilderness areas like Yellowstone should be left to burn. So that's what they did. I can't believe you didn't hear about this. There were reports that the entire park was gone. Dan Rather telling the country that President Reagan didn't care on the nightly news. See, President Reagan. So now this is historical. And bear in mind that I remember President Reagan as being a figure on the news when I was young. But... The people this game is designed for again, maybe, maybe not. You know, maybe it's designed for forty-year-old adults, fifty-year-old adults who you know remember the Reagan years. But maybe it's not. Maybe it's designed for younger people. And it's history now, isn't it? That's history, and we're being set in a position in history. So that's important when you consider artwork, isn't it? It's position because it's not created in the eighties and nineties. It's created in the twenty. 15, 2014, I think. And what the hell's he gonna do? Smoke jump in and snuff one out for the Gipper? Oh, I wanna reply and jump in. So what should they have done? I don't even know. 
By the time the Yellowstone folks realized the little fires weren't going to burn themselves out, a hundred thousand acres were gone. It's Yellowstone, you know? People don't want to touch it. But we touch it every single day. But hey, I got a 30 cents an hour raise because we can't have another fiasco. The goddamn park can burn down again. Really interesting. So uh, I, I'm assuming that is true then. I'll have to look it up in my free time um, where the Yellowstone burnt down in Reagan's reign. But uh, it's that's pointed as much, it, unlike anything else around so far, that's pointed us much more at like a real take care of the wildlife, you know, um, uh, ecological um, perspective on things, hasn't it? That's like a, a really, you know, almost political point, bringing up politics. Uh, they didn't, the, the ways to manage the environment and the ways we should, shouldn't. Just seems to be a bit randomly put in there. Attach the rope to the hook. Go on then. I've still got my compass out, but freewheeling with ropes now. I've got loads of ropes. Just attach them to everything. Whose system is this anyway? If we take it, we've come out here, we've set up the ropes and all that. Why have we set up ropes? Can't you put some stairs in? See, I sound mad, don't I, saying, can't you put some stairs in? Yeah, 90, okay, real Yellowstone fire. So yeah, this is historically accurate in certain contexts. I don't know whether the... You know, obviously not everything's going to be real, is it? Like, maybe my character Henry didn't really exist, but they're definitely setting us in real history. I wouldn't, I'm just going to pause for a second. I have to keep pausing. I'll stand out here and look at the, the view. Um, I played another game called Kona uh, that was similar, walking, discovery. I was a secret agent. Not a secret agent, what am I saying? A um, detective, that's the word, detective. You know, private detective with my hat with my trench coat and finding clues and it was really good and it was a real place in Canada Canada Kona anyway it's a real place and I went around this place and it was interesting and then eventually there was a supernatural element to the game and I thought oh I wish I'd knew that at the start because I wouldn't have bothered with all this chuff because I didn't like the fact that all of a sudden it was just ghosts like, it just was silly it was silly to me I was doing a detective story and solving clues and in my brain I was trying to solve the clues but I could never have solved the clues because ghosts I wasn't going to figure out ghosts <laughs> so like I hope this isn't the case I hope this is if in some context there is some mystery to figure out I hope it's something that I could legitimately figure out and it's not just random weirdness let's jump climb up yep if you're given the option to press Y to do something I'm pretty confident that's what you want to be doing isn't it can't go up there but I can climb up this and yeah I was going to say that I sound mad about stairs well look they put rocks that you can climb up so there's one but in my world, wildlife nature walk, in my world, there's a really steep slope. Let's imagine this is the steep slope where I go walking. There's a little, there is a steep slope. It's natural forest land uh, pathway, natural trust pathway, whatever. So people go walking on it. So what they've done is they've just made these little boxes, right, out of wood, like a oblong, long box with little slats in it, like a sort of funny ladder, like a, a box with these slats in it and they pluff that down on the ground chuff it in there in the mud and you think well that's just in the mud that's not going to help what it does is it settles in the mud just sort of um sinks to this it, it's the way it settles like uh the way the wind blows dunes you know it settles against these like slats and they they make their own sort of mud stairs eventually it makes its own sort of staircase in the because it's staircase shaped it's a bit like a ladder and it's it, natural in the environment, eventually it will rot. So, you know, they have to replace them. But there is ways, there is a way of maintaining the pathway and uh, adding easy to climb stairways. Look, 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 look. There's a rock there I can climb on, so that's a different path. I'm going to have to get the map out. I'm always going to be on the map. All, road, all the same, look, all the same. Cash. Oh, cave four, five, two. Ooh. Now that looks interesting, doesn't it? I haven't found these teens yet. Cash three. Oh, I might want to have a look at that. Where am I? Have I gone over the canyon? I've gone over the canyon. 
I thought it was going to go in the canyon down to the lake. Cached in the cave. I like the caches, don't I? Oh, I've got up here now. I go down there. Oh, it does. There's a problem with this: is that as much as it's interesting, all of that art talk, um, if I can't actually solve the puzzle of doing the game, <laughs> oh, I'm I'm up, I'm up above it, and I don't want to be up above it. I want to be down there, don't I? So I can follow it down to the lake. Or well, maybe I don't, because I've been sent this way. There's, there's no, um, there's no heads-up display. There's no pointer follow you know find the thing it's just general isn't it it's just general <laughs> go and have a look find the thing you know. <sighs> so I guess we'll just follow the, the way this is going it seems to be pointing in this direction doesn't it <laughs> I still haven't found hiding oh that was what I was going to say as well tracks if I was really looking for girls in the woods which I'm not <laughs> Oh my days. Here's, here's how you find girls in the woods. <laughs> For a start, they're not in the woods. They're not in the woods. Um, but if you were, you'd be looking at footprints, broken sticks, fresh foliage, breakage. Uh, but definitely footprints, you know, physical marks on the ground, fresh disturbance. And I'm not looking for any of that. I'm just following this natural pathway. Hoping that I'm going to stumble across the next clue. That's going to be conveniently placed in my fairly linear path by a caring game developer. What's that? Yeah, wood. I should be picking up all the wood, should not I? Tidying up. Putting into piles. Oh, blocked trail. Can I radio that in? Unlock it. I've got. I am a fire watch man. Surely I've got a tool. No. That's me. See what I mean about being useless as well. Having to follow these commands. I'm the protagonist. I'm the man. I'm the beer swilling, truck driving American man. And I can't even fix the block. I've got an overgrown trail here. Yeah, that'll happen. So I'm screwed when it comes to getting past it. Mhm. Mm screwed until you clear it yourself. Yeah. Great. Well, if I come across some tools, I'll add groundskeeping to my ever-increasing list of responsibilities. Sounds like he's voiced by McConnell. Um, and I'm angry and, you know, disenfranchised about the idea that I have to tidy up the block truck. That is my job. And if I find some tools, well, you know, the old tools, I thought we were talking about the old, you know, I've got the old tools. I've got you know, a map and a compass and a radio. Why haven't I got an axe? You know, why am I going back to the basics and doing that? I'm impotent. And the, the, the concept of my um, agency coming up, you know, you get well, you could get an axe and do it yourself, she says. And I'm like, yeah, the chuff could I? Like, That's just weird, isn't it? It's just weird. And it feeds into that feeling of, like I said, impotence, confusion, being directed by the females at every, at every level now. And um, I'm almost like this sense of foreboding horror. I opened this one before. I've been here before. Yeah, it's got a granola bar. I've been here before. Is that a note? Hey, it's another note. It's, uh, maybe I should have seen this earlier. Hey, who are these guys, Ron and Dave? They're leaving notes for each other in the boxes. Is there any chance one of them was that guy I saw in the canyon? You know, the guy with the flashlight? No, they're both rangers. They're not out here this season. I didn't really know them that well, but I always assumed the only thing Ron cared about was chasing tail and getting loaded. It's somehow comforting to know that he was able to keep up a correspondence with someone who wasn't going to send him a topless Polaroid. Ron, hey man, guy couldn't take it, so I locked up his lookout and put some stuff in the box. Found one of those bars you like, hiking into the park, ate something, my face is in the way. Oh, but let's get drunk when I'm back. Uh, Dave. I 
I'm not going to take the bar then. I know. It's, no, I'll, I'll put it back because it tells me where if I've been here before. <laughs> and I, I have been here before, so that's good. Their correspondence. Following clues. Am I going the wrong way again? Where's my map? That's my camera. <laughs> I have my map out so often, I can't even remember the button for it. Find the teens. I'm going back to the lookout, mate. I mean, I, I guess I'm going to the medicine wheel, aren't I? Am I? Am I going to the medicine wheel? Should be going to the lake to find them. I like the idea of the medicine wheel, though. Either way, I'm not going to the lookout, am I? Because that's they're not at my house. Well, I'm not going in the bush, either. I just got this feeling about the medicine wheel because I don't know what it is. And if they're going to be anywhere, they're going to be on that one location that I haven't been in the small zone that I've explored. <laughs> just getting development theory there. Oh, I should be reading chat more quickly. Look. <laughs> Bad workman blames their tools or lack thereof. <laughs> a completely inept work person who will not even attempt hey, to do the job. Hey, do you see that? What? 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 Yeah, I think so. That thin plume of smoke? I just selected it. I didn't see yeah. it. Yeah. Looks like it's way down to the southwest. What? You should be able to find a way over there from the meadow by the lake. Towards Five Mile Creek. It's in the southwest quadrant of your map. What, you, you think it's those girls? I'm pretty sure it's a campfire, so yeah, I'd call that a safe bet. Man, they really do not give a shit, do they? <sighs> not a one. Swearing again. So now we've got campfire smoke. I see, I see. Nice that they put it on the map. I was just wandering around <laughs> where I was. <laughs> I was trying to get to the medicine wheel. I've just wandered up home <laughs> to the bushes. I ain't got no clue, have I? Uh, yeah, so we're going to be going down there. Uh, we're not going to be going down there immediately, though. It's quite a way. I'm going to be saving this. I'm going to be saving this. Okay, let's just do that. Let's do that now. Let's save. So we've done it. Let's try and get it in my brain what we're up to as well, because... Oh, it says it on the map, doesn't it? Find the campfire smoke. That'll be good. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, you know, it says it's a four-hour game. I wonder if the time actually passes in game. I bet it doesn't. I bet I can stand here and talk for hours, can't I? It says it's a four hour game. It's not a four hour game, five hour game. Not for me, who chuffs on forever. So I thought we'd get it done this weekend. I thought we'd just do two hours yesterday, two hours today, maybe a top up hour, maybe a little top up hour later on. Uh, maybe not. But no, <laughs> we're going to have to do Mental Health Monday first and then we're going to get back into this. Uh, and I, oh, Mental Health Monday on Monday is going to be a tough one, isn't it? Because it's either going to be I'm feeling ecstatic because England win the football, in which case Mental Health Monday will be, ah, yeah, woo. <laughs> and that won't be very good for Mental Health Monday, would it? Me just going like, woo, isn't it brilliant? We won the football. Oh, uh, no, that won't be good for Mental Health Monday. But uh, I usually spend Sunday evening preparing Mental Health Monday. Like I usually spend Sunday evening having a look on the internet at the old web pages and thinking about what we want to talk about and making some notes. So even if it is good or bad, if it's bad and we lose, at least I'll feel in the right frame of mind. But uh, I won't have anything to... I won't have prepared anything. <laughs> but we'll get there. We'll do it. I'll do it on Monday. We'll do it. It will be achieved. So there'll be that. We'll do that. And then we'll have to pick this up in the week and I'll have to really make an effort to actually get on in the week despite the things that go on in the rest of the house and the, the things going on in the building over there which I said they couldn't put another roof on didn't I but they did they they put a roof that I didn't expect they got one roof on the house and then they got another roof coming off the side of the house down there that I didn't expect <laughs> they did put a second roof on or have they're in the process of putting a second roof on so I don't know what big deliveries and uh they had a man with the petrol, what's call it? It's a cement 
mixer. It goes round and round like that. Chugga, 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 chugga. And at the same time, you had radio on as well. And I was like, I'll sit here and quietly play Overwatch, not Overwatch, Firewatch. Yeah. So hopefully it'll all be cool. And I have to make the big effort. I have to say, look, get the dog walk, get it all sorted. Oh, shit. I've got to walk the dog now and I've got to tidy up and have a shower. Oh dear. Okay. But it's been good, hasn't it? It's been good. It's been another interesting foray into the world of Firewatch. What have we done today in Firewatch? We've wandered around the woods more. Uh, we're learning about these two new characters, Ron and... Uh, see, I haven't put my thought into this. Maybe it'll come to me when I'm walking the dog again. But Ron and... Uh, and Dave, they're both male figures, aren't they? Drinking as well. I wonder if the drink is something to do with it. I wonder if the alcohol, I wonder if there's a point to be made about alcohol and memory and loss and confusion. You know, I wonder if that's part of it. But those previous Firewatch guys, they were drinkers, weren't they? And, and then, of course, there was the fellow that disappeared. His backpack was there and him and his son disappeared. It's making me feel like I'm the one with the dementia. Hmm. Okay, you be good. I will see you anon. Good luck watching the England. If you're not watching the England, if you're not English, you know, good luck. Watch the England. <laughs> we need your support. Uh, and if you are English, then, you know, if you don't care about football, just watch it anyway, because everyone else is going to talk about it. A bit like Game of Thrones, you might as well see it happen. You know, a bit like landing on the moon. It kind of been, it seemed big, but the actual images and it kind of been that good. Oh, just they were always they go on about it, don't they? They landed on the moon. They go on about it. Oh, we uh, they landed on the moon. Oh, I saw it on the telly. Yeah, but I saw the pictures. It wasn't that good, was it? It's black and white. I've seen the moon from over here. I see it every night with my own eyes. I see that. I don't see England winning anything ever. So if it happens, fucking chuffing, yes. Uh, I also believe. <laughs> I don't believe this, but I do believe this. Don't believe this, but I do believe this. Don't believe this. I don't believe this in my day-to-day -day life. I've got to tell you something mad, <laughs> secret. I don't believe this in my day-to-day -day life, but when I'm sleepy at night and I'm thinking about things, like, Ooh, then I could believe this, right? Is that there's the many worlds theory, isn't there? There's the many worlds theory. So this happens, this happens, two different universes. Uh, if that's the case, I don't think it is for every decision. Did I have peas? Did I have 26 Ps or 27 Ps? There's a world where I had 28 Ps. There's a world where I had 29 Ps. There's a world where I had sweet corn. Now, I don't think for every decision, but for the big ones that mean things, the big ones, you know, the big trouser legs of time, which leg are you going to put your leg down? Which trouser leg are you going to go? The big ones, the ones where everyone's watching, you know, the big ones. I think John Lennon getting shot, that was a big one. That did or didn't happen. Two world divide, you know, that sort of thing. The big ones. Uh, if that's the case, right? Got my map out then. <laughs> Put it away. If that's the case, then uh, the two worlds theory. Tonight could be one of those things, couldn't it? The big ones. England win, England don't win. And I know that in the last five or ten years, maybe longer, if this has been the case, the many worlds theory, we've been going down the wrong trouser leg. People think, oh, because of the Germany war... You know, we won the war, therefore we're in the good out of the two split. You know, the other one is Hitler won and we're all German-speaking Nazis, all bad. You know, that vision of, of terrible what could have happened. Yeah, but consider that there was the war and all the bad things did happen. We've already gone down the bad leg. <laughs> we just had a good end at the sock end, didn't we? But we've already gone down the bad leg. And so many things, John Lennon getting shot, JFK getting shot. Uh, you know, Coldplay being popular. Uh, there's so many things that have gone wrong that make me think that we're in the bad trouser leg. But I also had this, like, you know, I don't believe this. I don't believe this in my scientific, you know, rigorous mind. But when I'm sleeping late at night, before bedtime, when I'm sleeping, I'm thinking, mad, you know, could this, could that, up in the stars. I could believe this, that... Uh, Maybe we can push it, you know, we can shape it. Two different ideas here. Maybe we can shape it by, you know, pushing it in a certain way. Maybe we can do that by our actions, really by our actions. Maybe, you know, maybe, yeah. But also, what if 
when that split happens, one world where England wins, one world where England loses, yeah, just that split, right? So in the world where England wins, there's me and I'm happy. And in the world where England loses, there's another me then, isn't there? It's the same me, but I'm sad. Sad. At, at the point where it splits and there's two of me, let's call me right here now wearing the, this, this hat, me. And let's go to the sad world. No, let's put me in the sad world. I'm in the sad world. It's split and I'm the real, the real me. You know, it's in the sad world. Sad, we lost. And in the other world, in the split, in the other world, here's me with the Johnny Depp hat on backwards so I don't have to do the voice. So I'm not doing the voice. Here's me and I'm happy. All right? Can I swap them over? Can I have, can I, oh, I'm sad. I'm in the sad world. I'm going to get you, I'm going to get you pull you in, you're all happy, yay, swap them over. So now it's me, sad world me, no hat, but I'm in the happy world. I'm in the happy world. I'm winning, I feel good. And okay, it's really me with the happy world hat on, but they've gone down the sad trouser leg. They've gone down the sad trouser leg. They're not feeling so good about it. Okay, so the result is... The same for the split to the trouser leg. Still two trouser legs, still two different options. There's still two, there's still winning and losing. And there's still happy Scott from the happy world and sad Scott from the sad world. But because it's me and I'm living in the sad world now, <laughs> can we split and we do the split? Can I jump into the happy world? And the other one can fluffing chuff and have that. And it'll be me and I'll be happy. <laughs> do you see what I mean? I don't know if that makes sense. They're still you, they're still you. No, but it, I'm me with my memories, aren't I? And that's that's me with the happy hat on memories. So they're different, aren't they? They're different, really. Can't I just jump across when we make the split? I don't want to end up in the thinking and seeing the sad things. I want to see the happy ones. So let's hope England win. And uh, if, uh, you know, if at the crucial moment in the game, if we're about to take a penalty like we did with Harry Kane, he missed that one, didn't he? And I thought, oh, I can't believe this has happened. He's missed the penalty. And as he did it, I put my hands on my... Like that. I went, oh. And everyone started cheering. And he scored the rebound. And I thought, did I just slip into the, the happy world? Did I close my eyes and suddenly I'm in the happy world? Because he scored. When, when I closed my eyes, we were in the sad world. He'd missed the penalty. As I opened them, we scored. So if you think it's all going to go wrong, just quickly close your eyes oh, and just wish... <laughs> wish as hard as you can oh come on and we'll wake up in the happy world the rebound will go in you know the VAR will say it was a go not a goal was a goal whatever uh, you know just, just wish because <laughs> I think if we all communicate I don't believe this I don't believe this I can't believe this in my normal rigorous scientific day to day thinking can I but uh, you know if we all wish hard enough <laughs> if we all want it enough if we all want it enough not just the bad people with the racism and the booing, the taking the knee. Not just the bad people with the politics and the Brexit and the rude. Not just the bad people and the selfishness and the £20 off your universal credit will have that back. Not just the bad people. I mean, they are all in the country as well, aren't they? They're all in the country. They are in the political majority at the moment. But not just the bad people, but for the good people as well. You know, the multicultural, you know, the helping the neighbours, you know, the good people good people you know maybe for them let's have let's all wish for them let's all of us wish let's have England win let's have that okay you be good my little Pukos I'm gonna have to go and wash the dog I got, yesterday I took the dog for a walk in the woods and he rolled in the stinkiest fox poo that I've seen in a long time and I had to give him a wash and he still smells so now we're gonna go for another walk and he's gonna get a second bath that he doesn't know about <laughs> Because we're going to visit family and all watch the football together and be safe from the coronavirus because we have a little test and two vaccines and it's all going to be okay. I'm going to win. And we're going to win. We're going to win. Fox poo, yeah. Yeah, tell me about it. Fox poo. It's distinctive. It's got its own horrific smell. It's got its own horrific smell. And he sees it, he, he spies it, and he's like, oh, hello. <laughs> that smells bad. And the reason is because he, he wants to chase the foxies. So he thinks if I smell of their poo, they won't smell me. So I'll get them. So he gets in that, he rolls in it and uh, rubs it on his back. And I'm running over going, no, no. 
and then he's in smelly mode and I have to get him in the car at the end oh, open all the windows in the car on the drive home oh. and then you get him home and you have to bath it and you're spraying him with the shower head and it's flying off and he's shaking and I'm like get off my face oh it's in my face it's got in my mouth it's got in my mouth oh, it's got in my eye and you know, I've got a special shampoo for fox poo because it smells so bad that you have to really you know and delicate dog special shampoo give him a good bath and at the end of all that at the end of all that we're going in the woods again now aren't we so you know god help him if he rolls in anymore <laughs> see he's not naughty he's good he's naughty though i don't know <laughs> i don't know what the answer is you be good though you be good and if you can't be good you are naughty